Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Dr. Wright and we are gonna be going over a pet food analysis today. We're gonna to be going over some numbers to help pick a food that is optimized for your pet's nutrition. We're going to be using my pet food scoring system. If you are not familiar with that, it's just a streamlined approach to try to help weed out some of this like, crazy, emotionally driven decisions that people are making. Um, and so I have that process outlined in a specific video here, which I'll link in the description box. And I also have a step-by-step -step process um, written out for you in workbook form on my website called Reasons We Feed. And this is a dog specific book with the cat book coming really soon. Um, and so it's got a lot of graphics and step-by-step -step, uh, workbook style way to workbook or work through food and you can check that out and we're going to basically be using that um, using that theory today. I am doing this review based on request um, from one of my subscribers that has been with me for about a year named Bill and he started feeding his dog uh, the science diet puppy. He went through everything and chose that for himself and getting close to a year now with his pup and gonna have to start transitioning over to the adult. And so he has asked me to look at the science diet adult option um, as a bridge from the puppy food to adult food. And so we're gonna be doing that today based on um, the request. Now, um, Hills does have like a small bites, um, in the, reg the regular, uh, I believe his dog is a Border Collie. So I'm going to do the regular one, which is like a barley. I think it's called barley something barley. Yeah, there it is. One to six uh, chicken and barley recipe. That's just kind of like their, their standard. All right. So using the pet food scoring system, the good thing about this website is it is very nicely um, outlined so that we can see all the information that we need to 10 point scale, um, that we're going to be working through here, starting with, let's see if we can find it. The AFCO statement. All right, here it is, animal feeding tests. So they did do feeding trials on this food. This food not only, um, you know, was formulated, but they also fed this food to dogs. And um, I've actually seen their facility, their, their um, animal feeding trial facility. It is quite amazing. Um, they were fed this food to substantiate what they say is, is what they say. And so they did animal feeding tests using AFCO procedures to substantiate that the Hill Science Diet adult chicken and barley recipe provides complete and balanced nutrition for adults. So specifically for adults, not all life stage, no lazy, no lazy man's approach. Um, they went above and beyond. And so they are going to get two points for the AFCO statement. Um, we already know that this is a kibble, so it is by um, definition not raw. So they're going to get a point for that. Um, and then it is a grain inclusive diet. You can see their chicken and then they go to cracked pearled barley and brown rice. And so they are gonna get two points there. Next thing we need to do is we need to do the feeding guide. And so that is right here. Um, for a 20 pound dog, they are su suggesting one and two thirds cups or if you're measuring 165 grams. That doesn't mean anything um, unless you know how to calculate your pet's rescuing energy requirement and you knew how to do some, some math to calculate the calories per cup. So um, one and two thirds, two thirds. So 1.7 cups at 365 cups, 620. So that actually is going to be on the high range slightly let's see if it's 10 percent off 568 is usually what we want so let's do 620 yeah i'm not gonna give them a point for that i think they are recommending you feed a little bit a little bit too much um this is such a big pet obesity issue um, I would calculate the resting energy requirement and I would probably feed a little bit less than that, especially if your pet is inactive, which most pets are. I did an earlier video on weight loss issues. Um, you know, a, a dog would have to walk miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and, and marathons to be considered an active dog. Um, they would have to, they an uh, actual 20 pound dog would have to walk two and a half miles a day just to work off one ounce of cheese. And so their metabolic requirements are different. So um, an active dog isn't just we take a brief little leisurely walk around the neighborhood an active dog is literally like running the Iditarod okay so um I, I 
am not going to give a point for that because I think it's way too many calories and I think obesity is a big issue and it's a major health thing for me. So I'm not going to give them a point for that. If you choose to feed this food, I think you should calculate the resting energy requirement and um, feed according to that and not the package recommendations and more on how to do that in a video linked in the description box as well as in my workbook. All right, so four points there. Now we're getting into the guaranteed analysis. And I think this is typically where Hills shines because they pay a lot of attention to detail on this. They do list their numbers on a dry matter basis, which is what we need um, to use this chart that comes from Small Animal Clinical Nutrition. Um, and so these are optimized nutritional values based on the research. And you can read through and look at the references in that textbook if you want to see where these numbers came from. Um, so protein, they are going to get a point because that is optimized for the adult dog. Um, fat at 15, they're going to get a point because it is op optimized for the adult dog. Fiber, they're going to get a point because it is optimized for the adult dog. And then they do subsequently get a point for calcium and phosphorus. So that's going to bring this food up to a nine, which in my opinion is a really good option um, because all the, you know, the basics are there. Now you do have to do a little bit of um, calculation probably to get the, the feeding correct. Now again, the feeding guide is just kind of like a starting point, but... Um, I'd rather start low and then add food than start high and then have to take food away. It's usually difficult for people because we eat with our eyes. So seeing that cup diminish, a lot of people are reluctant to do that. Plus the pet is used to getting more and they look sad. And so I am going to deduct a point for that. So this is only going to score a 9 out of 10. But the meat, so when you look at these scoring numbers, it's important to look at them in totality. And so they did lose a point, but the point that they lost is something easily um, corrected, right? So very easy to just go by our own calculations and, you know, correct that deficiency versus correcting a deficiency that is inherent to the food. You can't take a grain-free food and just add rice because again, you're causing an imbalance. Um, you can't take a food that has excess calcium and phosphorus and take that out. Okay. And so when you're using the pet food scoring system, it's important to keep that in consideration. Some foods we have are really, really good, um, but they're a little bit high in protein. No, you can't take the protein out, but you can do that blood work regularly um, and make sure that things are, are going okay. I guess you could do that for the calcium and phosphorus too, but not all blood panels check like calcium and phosphorus and things like that. Um, I guess you could, anyway, it's, it's different. It's more difficult to do that, but, um, you know, there are certain situations when you look at my analysis and you look at my um, numbers that I put out there for you, I want you to look at them, um, not as a be all end all. I mean, you certainly can. And, you know, I, I put out this for a beginner's approach because I do want it to be easier. And I know a lot of people are stuck on that. Just look at the five first five ingredients thing. Um, and I want to get away from that because that is so, 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 so flawed. Um, I wanted to give the people that wanted just a quick, you know, like reasonable way to do something that actually made sense. Um, and so you could do that, but what I really want you guys to do, especially those of you that are pet food enthusiasts, is to take these numbers and actually critically think through them and apply them to your life and your situation. And so it's all about balance, it's all about trade-offs, even in the food, and it's about that in your in your everyday life too. So um, this score to nine, I think this would be a good option for a lot of people. Um, if you don't like this food, um, I know a lot of people don't, they're going to say it's corn and blah, 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 and it's hills and it's horrible, horrible, it's horrible, it's horrible. Um, please refrain, you know, please refrain from poo-pooing people's decisions. Um, you know, I, I would rather we be supportive on this channel. And it's honestly sad that I have to have this disclaimer because people become so vile and have so much vitriol over um, other people's decisions. So let's keep it respectful in the comments. Um, this video again, um, you know, I do these on request. And so I'm happy to do this for Bill and I hope you found this helpful. Um, and I hope you found it helpful too. Um, feel free to join the conversation in the comments below respectfully. And I'll catch you guys again real soon on my next video. And always can check out my website for more tools and um, that very valuable workbook. All right, I'll see you guys later.